cans were thrown in the air and multiple celebrations started all around the country because these betting slips had Betfair punters thinking that they'd hit the jackpot. But what really happened here and why? Because Betfair made an epic £600 million fail that cost their customers dearly. It all started when Vola Vedette was the easy winner of the Christmas hurdle on the 28th of December in 2011 because in play that race was particularly erratic on the Betfair exchange. Now prices bounce around everywhere in play on every event on the betting exchange so that wasn't unusual although in this instance as Vola Vedette crossed the finishing line it was still trading at a price of 29.0 in decimals equivalent to 28 to 1. It was reported that a 21 £1,474,836 lay bet had been placed on the exchange on the eventual winner in play on that particular market, equating to a total exposure of £600 million. And savvy and running players took full advantage of that, as they would usually on any horse race throughout the entire year. Although in this instance, it was a little bit different because the 200 customers that had backed Vol of a Debt as it passed the line at a price of 28 to 1 were in for a bit of a shock. Now, for anybody who isn't familiar with in play betting markets and in play betting on exchanges, this is totally ordinary. There's groups of people who bet on horses, football teams, tennis players in play whilst the event is happening to grab a little bit of value and extract money from the marketplace over the longer term. To do this they're often using software and betting tools with fast API access to make sure that they can get the best price possible and also it's worth mentioning that bots and automatic programs are also active within the betting markets much like any other financial exchange around the world to extract that value. Now, now some advantage bettors and shrewd players are even placing bets between different exchanges to lock in a profit on the situation and in this instance some shrewd players had placed a back bet for the horse to win with the Betfair exchange and laid off their liability for the horse not to win with an alternate exchange such as BetDAC. Much like that very common saying they were hedging their bets and many of those people thought that they were in for a bumper Christmas having locked in a huge amount of profit in this instance. Although they were wrong because what happened next hit the headlines as a full-scale scandal. Now for context the Betfair exchange for anybody who doesn't understand is purely a peer-to-peer -peer platform that matches two different customers against each other so they can place bets against each other. Betfair exchange does not have a hand in the market or they shouldn't do. They make their money via generated commission on people matching those bets and also an additional charge called the premium charge applied to very successful exchange users like myself as you may have seen in previous videos on this channel. So to be clear, with Betfair's business model on the exchange, they have no risk, no exposure, no hand in trading the markets. It's purely a mechanism for transactions between two different peers. Unlike their Betfair Sportsbook, which is very different, where you're playing against the house, which is why you'll find that you get state restrictions and banned if you win too much money there. But there was a big problem in this instance because after the race, Betfair voided all in running bets on the entire marketplace for this particular race, saying that they were having an investigation because a unique set of circumstances had arisen. Shortly after it was claimed that one of the Betfair users bots had gone rogue and managed to lay this winning horse for that £21 million bet, even though they didn't even have £21 million in their exchange account. But to make matters worse, everybody who had been arbitrage betting, match betting, trading, trading between the two different exchanges exchanges or other exchanges found themselves in a precarious position because the other exchanges were not voiding their positions, leaving those people open in the process, costing them an absolute fortune if they'd laid vol of a debt against their initial outlay on the Betfair exchange. Now as regular exchange users will know, this is not particularly consistent with other instances on the Betfair exchange such as crashes, outages and maybe even VAR and instances like this where Betfair does not void the entire entire marketplace purely because there has been a mistake on one of the outcomes. It doesn't seem all that particularly fair and at the time it did fuel speculation that Betfair may actually be insider trading on their own exchange markets whilst regulating themselves as the actual industry regulator looks on. Now 34 people decided to raise a complaint with the independent betting adjudication service on this particular incident and it raged on over a period of time with many news articles in the process. Eventually 
ultimately, IBAS come to the conclusion that Betfair were not responsible, with Betfair saying that they could not pay out the potential liability there because the person that had had this bet only had less than a thousand pounds in their exchange account. As usual with all of these large corporations, Betfair fell back on one of their terms and conditions where it stipulated that they cannot be responsible for technological failures within their product, which raised further questions such as, is it fair that the law forces customers and consumers to pay for the company's mistakes? Either way, Betfair got away without having to cover the exposure for that 600 million pound liability. Unlike these seven betting codes, here in the end screen that really hurt the bookmakers. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.